Okay, good morning everyone and uh, welcome to, um, to VDF day number four. Wow, time flies. Um, so this is the agenda for today. Um, morning talks, um, then lunch. Uh, we'll try and um, do some lightning talks uh, at the same time as, as lunch. Uh, and then we'll have uh, MPC trial run um, and problem solving. And finally, we'll have a, a dinner uh, later today. Um, so just before I get started with the content of my talk, just a few statistics on, on who's here today. So we invited 113 people, basically people who are moving the space forward. Uh, and about uh, two thirds are here today. Thank you so much for coming. We have a, a really, really great crowd of people today. So it should be fun. Um, about half the people here are from the blockchain space, um, one third from academia, and uh, the, the rest uh, from, from hardware. And you know, one of the signs of, of growth here is that even though this is our fourth VDF day, more than half the people here are, are new. They haven't, it's their first VDF day. Um, so yeah, welcome, and uh, I hope you have fun. Uh, in terms of area for improvement, uh, unfortunately, we, we have less than 3%. Uh, woman here today, so I'm going to work on that for, for next VDF day. Okay, so um, two-part talk. I want to kind of give a, a progress update on, um, <clears throat> you know, all the things that have happened in the last nine months since the VDF day three, and so much has happened. It's, it's, uh, it's amazing. Um, and then in part two, I kind of want to give you uh, like a flavor of some of the things uh, I hope will get done in, in 2020. Okay, so since last VDF day, we've had eight new papers, three on VDFs, uh, five on groups of unknown order. Um, so much uh, is happening here. Um, very exciting. Uh, and you know, the, the, the paper that uh, defined uh, VDFs now has uh, 76 uh, citations. It kind of also shows, you know, this paper was from uh, June 2018. It's less than, than two years old. Um, and one of the things I'm, you know, extremely excited about is that this initial construction that uh, basically came from VDFs, the proof of exponentiation, is now, you know, leading a like mini revolution uh, in, in groups of unknown order. So uh, you can use proofs of exponentiation for all sorts of things now. So you can use them for, um, you know, uh, accumulators and vector commitments, and uh, you know, you can do these cool batching techniques. Uh, you can use them for polynomial commitments and, and, and therefore do universal snarks. Um, and you know, the list keeps on expanding. There's a very recent paper and we're going to have uh, you know, on, on new, new types of signatures with very unique properties. Um, and also this morning we had a, like a little uh, big little bomb that was dropped. Um, take, take it with a grain of salt because I only skimmed the paper. But now, basically, we have uh, three flavors of groups of unknown order. Uh, we have the RSA groups, the class groups, and the new one, which is the Jacobian uh, groups. Um, and uh, the, the cool thing about the Jacobian groups is that, uh, just like class groups, they're transparent. And it, it seems that they provide um, kind of benefits over class groups because they have uh, smaller, uh, smaller elements uh, and and uh, better performance, uh, but yeah, I guess the the, the security of these things uh, has to be has to be reviewed um, for production. Okay, another exciting development is that um, you know groups of uh, unknown order are kind of a first class citizen, uh, at least in the context of the Stanford Blockchain Conference. So we have a whole uh, session dedicated to them, uh, and we also have on the very last day, the very last talk. Um, uh, a, a talk on uh, on anti front running mechanisms using uh, VDFs. Like one of the the big kind of uh, foundational blocks um, for us is the the the, the RSA MPC. So um, Lee Hero has done kind of phenomenal job, uh, and they've been working on it for almost a year now tirelessly. Um, and just yesterday, the code uh, was released uh, on GitHub very permissive license, so you can uh, go uh, check it out. And one of the things that was kind of confirmed when during the implementation is that this, the hero's design is very, very scalable, like unusually scalable. So, um, you know, the, the goal was to try and get to a thousand participants, but uh, the hero went ahead and, um, you know, tested it up to 10,000 participants. 
Um, and today, we'll uh, hope to do a, a live demo with, uh, with people in this room. And, you know, it's, uh, it's one of the best types of, uh, of MPCs in the sense that it's uh, N minus one actively malicious, uh, maliciously secure. Uh, so we just need one honest person uh, to, for the whole thing to, to work out. And we have set uh, in the implementation a, a, a you know, conservative a security parameter. Um, and just to give you a little bit of historical context on these MPCs, um, you know, we had the, the Zcash sapling MPC, which uh, broke a record in terms of size in 2018. They had 87 parties, uh, and the whole MPC took six months. And then another uh, record was broken very recently with Aztec. Uh, you know, we're, we're learning how to do these MPCs better, so the, we had 176 participants, and it only lasted one month. Um, and in 2020, we hope to break another record uh, with, um, you know, a thousand parties. And uh, if all goes well, the whole thing should be done in 10 minutes. <laughs> okay, so uh, another area of growth is the VZF Alliance. So this is where we were uh, nine months ago. We, you know, we had two um, uh, funding institutions, the Ethereum Foundation and Protocol Labs. Um, we had AWS who helped us crack this time lock puzzle. Uh, and we had two teams um, kind of working full time uh, on this project, uh, and we've grown quite a bit. So we have three new funding partners: uh, Cosmos, Tezos, and the uh, National Science Foundation. I mean, just a bit of context: this is a, a pretty expensive project for a cryptographic project, um, partly because we have to do the MPC, but even you know even more significantly because we uh, we are looking to build uh, hardware, um, and. We also have new sponsors on the hardware side providing tooling and uh, uh, people like uh, Synopsys uh, uh, and Xilinx. And we're, you know, we're very grateful for all the contributions uh, here. Uh, and I also want to, to mention you know, uh, Academia that's been extremely supportive of the, the whole project. So like, in this room, we have um, academics from nine different universities across four countries. Um, and you know, I, I want to you know, highlight uh, two teams. Um, one is uh, the Sabanchi team. They have uh, five people kind of uh, doing r research on uh, multiplication algorithms and, uh, and you know hardware implementations. And we have the the team at Stan the Stanford crypto team, also about five people who seem to be publishing a new paper every two months on uh, on groups of unknown order. So please you know do uh, do, uh, do continue that. Um, we have. Uh, also, you know, a sign of maturity of the space is that this is no longer ideas. This is code, and it's starting to um, to enter the real world. So we have uh, two blockchain projects that are looking to launch on day one with VDFs as a key part of their uh, consensus, uh, Chia uh, and Solana, and they have running test nets. So this is a, a great sign of maturity. Um, and at the layer two, um, at the application layer, we have uh, today an announcement. Uh, we have a, a, a VDF service. VDF has a service. Um, so what it does is that it will take um, an Ethereum um, block and it will build, um, it will do, do some work on it the, 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 and then produce the output and the proof on a regular basis. So that could be used, for example, for services like Pool Together, which is kind of a, um, <coughs> a lottery type uh, that decentralized application uh, on Ethereum that needs uh, randomness. And we also have uh, Starkware that is also considering uh, VDF as a service, uh, this time using a completely different construction of VDF uh, based on stocks. Um, we've also made a lot of progress on the hardware front. I'll only have one slide because the next talk will um, go over it in detail, but we, we run this uh, $100,000 competition. We started with a baseline of 50, uh, which was uh, brought down uh, to 25 nanoseconds. That's per uh, 1,000 bit uh, modular squaring, uh, which, is, which is very fast. Um, we also uh, have done some work uh, with GPUs. So the, the VDF as a service that I just mentioned actually uses the uh, FPGA as an evaluator and then the prover uses a, a, a GPU which is running on uh, AWS. And the GPUs can actually get pretty good uh, uh, bandwidth in terms of uh, operations per second. So this is 1 billion, 1,000 bit um, 
modular multi multiplications per second. And we've also done some uh, initial work, um, you know, taking the the most promising design so far, which is uh, uh, the Ostok design uh, that was developed, you know, for the VDF project. Um, and we're looking currently right now in terms of unoptimized numbers, uh, latency of three nanoseconds, area of um, six square millimeters, and power of five five watts. Okay, so that was the progress. Uh, what about the, the, the year ahead? So one of the things that would be nice is to try and strengthen the, the core assumptions. So two of these core assumptions are one, the adaptive root assumption, which was first formulated um, in uh, June 2018 by Benjamin Wisolowski. Um, and then we have the, the sequentiality assumption, which says basically that um, if you want to compute the, this large exponentiation, your, your, your best bet is to do lots of uh, sequential squarings. And most people that I've talked to, almost everyone, believe, you know, th they're not too worried about these, but there's a few contrarians. And so I kind of want to highlight those. So um, we have uh, Devesh Agarwal, who's actually an, an expert in um, RSA assumptions. In, in his PhD, he, he showed that the... Um, uh, the strong RSA uh, assumption is equivalent to factoring in the generic uh, ring model. And he, he said uh, in an email that, you know, on the surface it looks like, uh, well, he wouldn't be surprised if there's a way to efficiently solve the adaptive root problem. So one of the things that we've done, um, you know, proactively is that we've set up a new website with bounties. So there's about 40 grand of bounties um, if you can, you know, help us better understand this assumption, either by breaking it or by... Um, proving that uh, it's equivalent to, you know, an existing other assumption in some sort of model. Um, and actually, I have uh, some sort of unconfirmed rumor at this point that uh, there is an up upcoming paper that will prove uh, uh, some sort of, of result like this, which is very exciting. Um, and then on the sequentiality assumption, you know, Dan Daniel Bernstein is kind of saying that, hey, hold on, maybe there's some algorithms out there that can do uh, squaring uh, at least in theory, faster than, sorry, exponentiation is faster than, than repeated squaring. And, you know, this is something we're taking seriously. Uh, it looks like likely this is, these algorithms are, are not relevant in practice, uh, but we still really want to study them. And one of the things that we're doing here is um, doing lower bounds research. So um, we have uh, Ryan Williams here who's uh, been um, leading some research on lower bounds, also working with Benjamin. So that, um, I think there'll be an upcoming paper uh, with their results. Um, on the topic of, of security stuff, I kind of want to highlight two gotchas if you're going to implement this stuff. Um, so the first one is if you're working with RSA groups, you know, you need to pay special attention to this minus one element. And, you know, usually the recommendation is to quotient out by, the, uh, by one minus one. Uh, it's kind of an easy mistake to, to miss. And then the other thing uh, to be careful of is if you're working in the non-interactive uh, you know, version of a VDF and you hash to prime, you want to hash to the first two to the two lambda primes. So there's like an extra two there. And most people will, will hash to primes lambda. Um, and so then that's a very uh, you know, easy to mistake to make. And it turns out there's an attack um, that will have your security if you don't do this properly. Um, and from what I can tell, like, Everyone tripped on this except Benjamin in his original paper. So please be careful. Um, I can just add one, one yeah, go ahead. Right. Okay, so for the recording, I'll just repeat uh, what Dan said. Basically, um, if you're in the interactive version and you have a verifier who samples a random prime and then sends it, um, you, ac you can actually use just lambda. But I if, you, if you want a non-interactive version and you apply the fiat Shamir heuristic, then um, you, know, you, you actually have a loss of soundness if you, if you keep the, 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 the lambda as opposed to two lambda. And so this is kind of uh, interesting, kind of theoretically, because usually when you apply the fiat Shamir transformation, you don't have this loss of soundness, but in this special case, you do. Um, ooh, yeah, let's use the mics so that I don't have to repeat everything. <laughs> So 
So, can everyone hear me? Yeah. So, Fiat Shamir will have a loss. I mean, always, like, if you want Lambda bit security, if you're using Fiat Shamir, the interactive protocol, at least if you want a formal proof of reduction based on a random oracle, uh, my understanding is we need we need two lambda security. But the question is, is there a concrete attack if you can do it? And if I understand your response, you're saying for in this case, there is a concrete attack. But I'm saying in general, if you want a security proof, there is this loss from two lambda to lambda. There's lambda to two lambda. Like at least if you want with resettable soundness and these kind of things, then there is this loss theoretically. Um. I saw some people disagreeing, but so maybe that could be a lively discussion for the, 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 the breakout sessions uh, later on. Um, okay, I mean, the other thing we wanna do is we, we, we wanna take you know, security of another like, fundamental block, which is the RSA, extremely seriously. And there's a few you know, challenges here. So one of the challenges is that um, you know, the RSA MPC is re really is mission critical for what we're doing. Uh, partly because the plan right now is to burn the modulus in the ASIC. So if the, a if the modulus turns out to be factorized you know, a year later, that would, that would likely kill the whole project. Uh, and the other um, you know, caution is that you know, th these, these, these things are hard. And you know, so we have the, the, the Zcash example where Zcash is a team of you know, cryptographic experts and you know, they managed to, to, to mess it up. So um, yeah. Also, in terms of complexity, the RSA MPC has a few moving parts. You know, it has an online phase, and it has a, the zero knowledge part, and then the online phase has you know sieving, and then bipyramidal testing, and then the, then the, the zero knowledge part has you know a, a Lihero proof system, and then it has a, you know Sigma protocol. So this complexity does add up, and you know there's a few thousand lines of code that ha will have to be reviewed. Um, and the other, you know, uh, property of the um, MPC is that it's, it's based on the ring LW, uh, uh, LWE assumption, um, which needs, uh, which is, you know, somewhat recent, but also needs a bit of care, I think, to uh, instantiate properly. But we also have uh, a bunch of good news. So the good news is that very soon all, all the work that Lee Hero uh, has made will be uh, reviewable publicly online. So we're going to have specs on GitHub very soon. We're going to have security proofs that will go on, on, on GitHub. Um, and one of the very nice things is that the design is extremely modular. So you know, all these moving parts are actually modules uh, that you can isolate, that you can analyze uh, independently. And uh, they've written their proofs in the, in the universal composability framework, which is very nice. Um, and we also intend to do a lot of due diligence, so lots of third party audits, bug bounties, and, and potentially even uh, for more verification for some parts of uh, of the protocol, and you know, there's no real rush. You know, we if we need to, you know, take the whole year 2020 to do these these audits and do it properly, then then that's what we'll do. Um, and another thing that uh, we're looking to do is reduce verification costs. So this might not be obvious, but uh, you know, usually when you think of the verifier, you think of a CPU, and you know, verifying a VDF is extremely cheap. But actually, there's the verifier can be um, in different contexts. So one context is, for example, the uh, Ethereum virtual ve machine, the EVM. And right now, um, uh, actually, so that should say uh, 1 million gas, sorry, not 10 million gas. Right now, it's r roughly 1 million gas, um, which is somewhat expensive. But the good news is that, um, you know, we did some studies and we found that the, the, the modular exponentiation uh, opcode was overpriced by a factor of 15x. So you know we're going to go through the governance process and lobby for a reduction of this uh, opcode, which should lead to a 15x uh, repricing. Another kind of very interesting um, environment for the verifier is within the SNARK. And there's a very nice paper from a Stanford team um, that basically uh, showed this, and that um, it costs roughly you know t 10 million constraints to 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 to, to verify a. Um, module exponentiation within a SNARK, and I'm, I'm hoping that we're going to see huge improvements there. Uh, and you know, there's a few ideas potentially. Again, maybe during the VDF session today, we'll c we can make improvements. Uh, and then, even on the CPU side of things, you know, it, right now it's maybe let's say roughly 4,000 CPU cycles to um, per per group operation, and may maybe we can accelerate this with with handwritten assembly. Another thing that needs figuring out is the prover. So uh, 
the one of the properties of the prover is that it can be um, massively parallelized. You know, uh, unlike the the VDF evaluation, which you know, the, at every step you only have one thing to do, which is square from the previous uh, step. Um, here, the design space for provers is is is, is huge. Uh, so you know, the parallelism is both a, a blessing and a curse. And so we still have to take an exact you know make a d the decision as to which which direction we'll, we'll, we'll go with. Uh, and one of the more crazy directions is this, this last row is um, maybe we can build a, a, a snark ASIC for the prover. So we, there's some uh, VDF schemes, you know, such as the, the, the PHX scheme where the, 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 the prover is actually quite, quite cheap, but the, the downside is that it produces like these big proofs that are more expensive to verify. And so maybe we can take these big proofs and we can compress them with a snark. Um, and you know, we'd get kind of a similar result. Uh, but in addition, we'd get kind of a snark ASIC, which would be useful for the you know the whole blockchain space and beyond. Um, yeah, I mean my favorite approach is this one, but you know to to be debated uh, with the hardware people. <laughs> um, and then finally, you know one of the things that I think would be really really nice um, is this this one million dollar comp competition that I've been uh, talking about, and you know basically this is going in line with the with the ethos of the ecosystem everything we do in the blockchain space is open source and hardware you know by you know by by default right now it's the status quo is that it's it's all closed source um and so you know in in an attempt to try and change that a little bit uh, having this this open source comp uh, competition where any anyone from all around the world can make contributions and win uh, cash prizes um would be very cool and so um, in addition to kind of improving the latency um, of, of these modular multiplications, there's also potentially an opportunity to uh, Im Im improve the, the power of them. And they kind of have different use cases. So if you improve the latency, you will improve the VDF evaluator, and it's also useful for time locks. But if you improve the power, then that's useful for the VDF prover and you know, other similar constructions like the snarks and the accumulators and the vector commitments and whatnot. Um, and so if we can get to a point where, um, you know, we basically have two designs, each of which are very optimized for their own uh, purpose. Um, so, you know, it would be nice, for example, to get to, to, to one nanosecond per square uh, for the latency, uh, but, you know, you'd pay more on the power, so you'd, you'd pay maybe 10 nanojoules of power. But if you, if you optimize on the power, then it's the kind of flipped. So you'd only pay one nanojoule per operation in power, but you'd, you'd, uh, the, the latency would shoot up, let's say, to 10 nanoseconds. Okay, so that's that's basically the the end of uh, my talk in terms of content. I just want to highlight some of the 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 breakout sessions. So this is where a lot of the magic usually happens during VDF days. Um, just having all of you in the same room um, is an opportunity to, to to solve open problems. And in the past, we have solved open problems uh, during VDF days. So we have six uh, breakout sessions. One uh, or two is on the fundamentals, so the 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 security assumptions and the MPC. Um, and then we have two on applications, so use cases and, and you know, using groups of unknown order beyond, uh, beyond VDFs. Uh, and then we have two on, on kind of more technological uh, topics. One is uh, hardware, um, and the other one is um, having the verifier within, within a SNOC. Um, and these are kind of suggested leads. I, I've, I've asked most people, but yeah, if you don't want to be a lead, then, uh, then do, do tell me and we'll uh, edit that. Okay, that's it. Thank you.